Uh, we're going to be putting down some Kentwood engineered flooring. It's really, really nice stuff. And uh, as we as we go along, you'll see how it all goes together. <laughs> Uh, remove the carpet and the under padding. Randy's just sweeping up here. We're going to float it on this floor because it's a concrete base and that requires uh, gluing the boards to each other but not to the floor. I know because when we lay our next layer over it's going to tape on top of this and that's what's going to keep your vapor barrier Seal. Right. So okay. well, that's going to be on the bottom. Feel it. Feel the difference. Feel the difference. Right. Yes, that's good. Randy, trust me. Yeah, this is on the bottom. Because this is the vapor barrier, and these little yeah, dimples yeah, yeah. allow for air movement. Yep. yep. Right. And we're also going to run it couple of inches up the wall on each side so we're kind of we're going to cut a bit of excess on it yeah 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 yep. I remember that part actually little strip right there okay, I like just looking at this right now I'm okay with random but I'm going to mildly try to put some of the darker ones together I kind of like dark and then it comes light down here. I kind of like that. And that's, so what, we'll that's what we're going to do. We'll do it sort of like that. So, okay, do you want to grab your uh, saws? and? Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll do that. Okay, so this doesn't get taped down. We just tape it to the other piece that's coming in. Right. Um, the weight of the floor is going to hold it down. Because we curl it up around there. Uh-huh. Right? Um, yeah. yeah, when we... Put the quarter around. Mm -hmm. Put the quarter around. We're going to trim off the excess. Oh, yeah, put yeah, the quarter yeah. around, and then the yeah. quarter around is actually going to hold that other wall. So that's what I have to do. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Here. So I'm actually gluing. I did it right in the groove. Wipe the excess away with a damp cloth. And um, if I if I saw a little bit in the crack, I would take a small little piece of paper or even a, an exacto blade. Just get it out as much as I can. Rewipe, you're good. Yeah, now that the first row is done, that was the toughest row to keep it all straight and aligned properly. You start to go out, you're gonna have problems later on down the line, um, obviously. Uh, it took me a little bit to get that once they're nice and precise um, and everything's together for as far as the first and second row, a lot easier on the on the way forward from there. So Okay, there you have it. Okay, so Randy went out and found this awesome uh, transition that's going to match the flooring nicely. And this is going to go from the flooring there into the tiled flooring that's in the bathroom. So, because this is on a concrete floor, we've really got no real choice but to glue it down. We're going to be gluing it with uh, uh, a PL, which is a constructive adhesive that's with Pages PL Premium. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna cut this away because we don't want to glue to this. We yep, want to glue yep, to yep. the floor. So we'll cut this away. But what I'm what I'm doing here is I'm I'm gonna measure that which is uh, five eighths of an inch. And I know that we're gonna be five eighths of an inch there. So the piece that we're it's this piece. Yes. We don't need it this big, right? We actually only need it to be. Uh, one and seven eighths inch. And this is a two and a quarter. So I'm just got to get the length of it down. I cut this piece a tiny bit too short. And I made a mistake here, rookie mistake, but it is what it is. So what I should have done is taken a saw and cut under here and have the foreign go underneath. So because I made this mistake and I am choosing not to rip off the floor, I am just going to put cord around, around here as such. The everyday person walking through here won't notice it. Um, professionals that do this kind of stuff, they'll notice it, but, you know, I don't really care. I don't know. It's nice to know that this is uh, flexible enough to do something like that. Uh, 
that's going to uh, going to be able to get that in there. Yeah, we're still good. Yeah, so I think we should just glue it and get it in there. Yeah, sure. So Randy, uh, thanks for uh, participating in the in this odd job video. It was uh, a bit of a happy event. No, thank you for coming and helping and shooting a video. I've always wanted to be on YouTube. Actually, that's a lot. I've been on YouTube. Check out the band Undying Union. Yeah, link link in the description below. All original music. Thanks, yeah, for, and, and actually, thanks for the plug. Yeah, and actually, uh, uh, can I can I use uh, use <laughs> some of your music as uh, background? Yeah, music? of course, man. So the background music you're listening to is Undying Union. Ah. Go check it out. Written and performed by yours truly. Hope you enjoy. got that miter saw set up on a 45. You get used to working in tough, tough, tight spaces, eh? Now, you guys know that I like work, I, I, I do a lot of work alone. And in doing work alone, you figure out ways to do things without needing two men. So, I'm going to lay this down here on the floor. Brandon gets behind me, he'll be able to, to see. So I'm going to lay this here in a straight line. And then I'm going to take my tape measure. tape measure here in a straight line as well. So that I can actually put them side by side and I can get an accurate reading. Yeah. So now if I want to cut it 134 inches, I can actually see where 134 inches is, which is here. I'm just putting a tick. And this is an inside corner, so I know I'm going to go this way. So. Zoom in here so we can see. I'm just putting a little arrow here to show that I'm going to be cutting on an angle that, that way. Oh, okay. Right? If I had it on this side, it'd show that I'm doing an angle the other way. Gotcha. So this is just so I don't get confused. Sometimes when you work with somebody else too, you come up with neat little symbols and stuff that you write on the wood so that your partner knows what you're doing. So up we go. We're going to go back outside. We're going to try and cut that. So, this room, last room, finally done. This closet took a lot longer than I was hoping it would take, I'll tell you that. But, you can see in here. I just 
drop the phone. Sorry, I'm gonna edit that out. Okay. Now, if ever you have a doubt about your measurements, it's best to cut a little longer and then trim later. Because the last thing you last thing you want to do is exactly yeah. waste the whole piece. No kidding. That's a nice bit, piece of uh, quarter round. Woo! So Randy's gonna, later on, after we're all done in here, Randy's gonna come around with a little bit of uh, acrylic caulking, white acrylic paintable caulking, and just touch up all the little holes that the nails have made, yep, and then smooth it over, wipe it with a wet rag, and then you can paint it. Nice. That sounds wonderful. This is engineered hardwood, but the same principles apply to any type of floor that you put down, whether it be laminate, quick lock, um, or our hardwood. So these are the same principles. So for me, one of the most fun parts about this whole uh, ordeal was racking. Um, racking is just, we talked about it earlier, just setting up all your, your planks to see how you like it. Um, it still is different when it's a finished product. Some of my favorite things about this type of engineered hardwood was the little knots or the eyes. Um, I really tried to make certain ones that I found um, in spots that were highly visible that I would like to look at. So you can see I've got stuff like that um, in highly visible high traffic areas, but also some of my favorite pieces for me personally. So think about this um, because I had a different impression beforehand. Uh, I realized that once it was all done and everything was down, I really, really, really enjoyed these dark spots like this, this stuff here, keep coming back. You can see, uh, uh, I was just glad I, I decided to go this route. Uh, this is one of my favorite pieces here. It really, for me, brings character to your floor and inevitably your entire place. So something to think about. Um, as you can see, I've got more knots and eyes in high traffic areas. That's what I like. Just try and be aware of, of as you're working away and you're, you're into the project, um, your ideas or notions, they might change a little bit. So it's definitely something to think about because my notions changed uh, halfway through. And I'm glad I made that decision to put some of these really dark pieces that make it stand out and give it character um, in these high traffic areas. Um, I really like the look of this, uh, especially uh, considering what I had was seven year old carpet, but yeah, it's nice stuff. Modern, I like, good color. Really brightens up the place, makes the place a lot bigger. Makes me happy. Yeah, it is, it's very nicely done. Okay, but there was, there was a few things here we want to point out. Now, before you started, there wasn't any quarter round on the bottom of your eyelash. No but you, you put that there. Yep, I put that there. So I just bought regular white primered quarter round. Um, I found the closest color I could to this right here. Uh, Canadian Tire had a uh, spray can of something that was similar to this. Um, yeah, so it looks pretty good. It looks, it looks amazing. It looks amazing. And the... Uh... The, the, the transition as well. That's something that we just colored matched at Lowe's, I think it was. Yeah, it turned out pretty good. Shockingly similar to the flooring, to be honest with you. So yeah, we lucked out as far as that goes. I mean, most times when you buy your flooring, you can order the these thresholds, uh, uh, stair nosing, all that kind of stuff. You can order that with the flooring. But you took a chance and, and, and it paid off. Yeah, it worked out. Is good. Right. This stuff here is only half inch. So we had concrete underneath here. Uh, we did put our soundproofing um, uh, mat down, but before we did that, uh, we obviously leveled the floor in certain spots. This was one of them. So my one little regret I have, and it's not a big regret, um, I only notice it because I know what happened um, in the process. Uh, we put the leveler here. 
Um, it dried a lot quicker than I thought it would. And so I wasn't able to really kind of smooth the, a transition into um, the edge of the leveler. So I had a tiny bit of a gap. It was not that big at all. Um, eight, not even really. Um, but still, I can kind of feel it's nice and sturdy here, and I feel a tiny little dip there, but it is barely noticeable. It's only noticeable to me because I did it. Um, no problem, but watch out for stuff like that in the future. Mm. Now, the only other issue that we had here, I'm going to show you here in the bedroom where everything came together. Take a look at that wall. So that's something that, you know what, when you're dealing with these types of buildings and whatnot, you're going to run into stuff like that. That wall is completely bowed out and crooked. So you see how we had to kind of approach it there. And you know what? From time to time, Randy, this is, this is what happens. And it's, it's nobody's fault. And even, even with expert uh, flooring installation, it, you, can't, you can't get around a bad wall. No, there's not much you could do. All things considered, we did pretty good, I think. It, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you're going to get it looking much better Nobody's going to notice that. One other thing that I wanted to uh, go back and touch on, and this is one of the things that I like about Rini's videos, um, and I wanted to make sure that I wanted to talk about my mistakes. I've watched videos on YouTube in the past, God bless them, um, always great information, but I like it when I can see people make the mistakes. Um, that way I know this is what I need to avoid, or this is how I'm going to fix it. I didn't do an undercut here. Um, and I did it uh, going forward into the room. But if you want to back up, all things considered, now that I'm all done, I'm actually glad I made that mistake. Why? For me personally, and this is all personal preference, I actually enjoy the look of the core around here this uh, at this entranceway and these two doorways as well here. Why? Because it gives it kind of like a pillar look. And then when I go inside, I did the proper undercut. It was a mistake on my part, but I actually uh, am very pleased that the way it worked out and I like the finished product now. That's excellent, excellent. Your, your floor looks amazing, Randy. Yeah, yeah, you did a really good job. It, that's, that's all I gotta say. If this, if this video helped you at all, if you got, if you enjoyed it, liked it, all that kind of stuff, give us give us a thumbs up and, and subscribe. Thanks for having me. Ah, thanks for your help, Odd Job, Randy, always a pleasure.